Here's what's coming up in episode 188. Roz Drezfalez. Hey, boo. Oh, look at this parlor. What a place to spend a pandemic. I mean, it's gorgeous. I've always been around creative people and celebrities and people like that. And it seems like one thing that they all have in common is that they have ghost stories. It would seem. A celebrity in a studio talking to camera very seriously as there's a reenactment, oftentimes with actors that uh, have on wigs and (laughs) uh, only vaguely look like the celebrity. That's what I love. Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the seance. If you don't follow me on social media, you may not have seen that recently I had my mind blown when I was given a personal virtual tour of David Kirshner's workspace. Now, you might not necessarily recognize that name, but you know his work. Perhaps most famously, David was the creator, writer, and producer of the film Hocus Pocus, one of my all-time favorite movies. But he's also the creator of the 80s hit An American Tale and even Child's Play. So he dreamed up Chucky, y'all. But as I said, I got to see several props from the movie Hocus Pocus and some of the stories that go along with them. And this was all part of an interview that I'll be sharing in the future right here on the Big Seance Podcast. But you can see the teaser and part of that virtual tour on YouTube and Facebook. But I'll just include the link to the video here in the show notes if you haven't seen it. But today, you're here for Roz Drezfalez. Roz Drezfalez is a drag queen, comedian, host, writer, and actor known as the Bargain Bin Beauty. Based in Los Angeles, she can be seen on stage literally any place fine drag queens are sold, including her role as the host of Ross Matthews' Dragtastic Bubbly Brunch, the once-over at the Hollywood Improv, and she will soon be at a comedy club or gay bar near you. Her personality has been seen on BuzzFeed, Bravo, Hey Queen TV, and even a national commercial for Google. Roz is also the host of Ghosted by Roz Drezvelez. Though not an expert on the paranormal, Roz explores her curiosity of things that go bump in the night with celebrities, psychics, and everyday people. Go give her a follow on Instagram at Roz Hernandez. And now let's pour the tea. Welcome to the parlor here at the Big Seance Podcast. Hey, boo. Oh, look at this parlor. What a place to spend a pandemic. I mean, it's gorgeous. As an entertainer, you're getting ready to really jump back into this scary kind of post-pandemic world, aren't you? Yes. And it's scary, yes, uh, in some ways. Because I've spent this year 
you know, I used to perform and do all kinds of things. I mean, I had a really fun, interesting like life in, in my opinion, where I live in LA and I perform in different clubs, comedy clubs. I do lots of drag queenery around town and it leads to all different kinds of things. And so when the pandemic happened, it was, I mean, that was my full-time job. So I haven't really been able to do any of that stuff. Luckily, I will say that being able to have a podcast has really saved me. And especially having one that I was already doing. And I'm so grateful to have had that because otherwise, you know, it's like I can't do any of the other things that I do. So I'm excited. I've spent some time thinking about the things I do want to do and I don't want to do uh, when it comes to like live performance and stuff. But I've got stuff written down in my calendar for June and I'm sure the first one's going to be a little scary or a little crazy. But I've even noticed just a a little bit of social interaction that I've been doing more the past few weeks. And I think it's going to be scary. And then it's like, no, it's it's fine. You know, we all forgive each other for not talking to each other all year. Like we've all had our own stuff going on. And it's kind of like riding a bike in a lot of ways. So I'm ready for it. I am curious what sparked your interest in the paranormal and how many of those spooky experiences have you had? Well, like most of us paranormal weirdo adults, I grew up in a haunted house. So that's always been something that I've had lots of questions about. I I started reading the books as a kid, watching the TV shows as a kid, and I just was really into it. And then as I got older and, you know, I, I started performing and stuff. And so it's not like I really pursued a paranormal path necessarily, but it was, it's always been a part of me. I've, I've always wanted to know people's ghost stories. I always ask people when I go to parties or anywhere I go, really, if it, especially if it's an old place, I'm like, what are the, tell me the stories. And I believe that from growing up around a haunted house and and having experiences as a kid that I really do feel like I can sniff it out a bit. And sometimes I get these vibes and I've been proven right. A lot of times every psychic I've ever talked to tells me I'm psychic. I'm terrified of doing it. Um, Though after this past year, I I did consider like I could use a, a new career. Maybe I should just start charging people and be like, yeah, your house is haunted. That'll be $5,000. Um, but I am not a psychic. Anyway, so once I had been you know, living in LA, I moved in 2008 here, and I've always been around creative people and celebrities and people like that. And it seems like one thing that they all have in common is that they have ghost stories. It would seem. Since doing a weekly podcast, I've realized like, okay, not every single celebrity or whatever has a ghost story. If if they did, it would make my job as a booker much easier. But a lot of them do. And so I wanted to do a podcast and I was like, I love the TV show Celebrity Ghost Stories. And I wanted to see how many people from that show I could get on, how many people that I'm friends with would, would come on and Then I'm like, you know what? I'm asking people these questions and I don't know anything about any of this stuff. And so I'm like, I need to start having like people that do know about this stuff. So I started having more paranormal professionals on and then people that listen to the show come on. And since then, I feel like I've definitely, I'm not completely clueless about a lot of stuff about it as I might've been when I started. I'm, I'm definitely learning a lot and I've gotten out in the field a little bit and done a little bit of paranormal research myself. And that's something that I'm looking forward to as the pandemic uh, comes to an end and I can go uh, ghost hunting around town and around the world and whatever. That's cool. We've kind of switched places as far as that goes, because that's kind of how I started was being in the paranormal investigation world and really jumping into research and then After that, I kind of was like, "Uh, I just want to have more fun with it and not take things as seriously and just ruminate the same questions over and over that we'll forever be asking because we'll never really know until we're there or we're dead. And (laughs) yeah, I, I like that about you. Like the fun. Where's the fun? Where's the beef? I want fun in this 
what do we call it? This genre, this medium, this field, like there's, there's just so much taking it so seriously. Yeah. And also that thing that we have in common, I think, is not being an expert. And I think that a lot of times the people that are speaking about this stuff on their own shows, whether it's TV or podcasts or whatever, is that they do have like their ideas sometimes, not always, but sometimes they have their set standards of this is what a demon is and this is what happens and here's how you do this and that. And it's like, I don't know if that's, that's not where I want to be. That drives me crazy, Roz. That drives me crazy when they're like, no, this is how it goes. Totally. And I feel like I have a lot of beliefs that I've had to unlearn from consuming a lot of stuff like that my whole life, you know, reading books about what a demon is and what a this is and how that is. And, and now I have to kind of be like, well, that's what one person thinks, or that's what some people think. And, and I'm down to hear what other people think and have a good time doing it. I figured that out really quickly after reading. I don't know. Once you read 10, 15 books by psychic mediums, you learn yeah. really quick that I'm like, uh, it can't be all 15 different ways. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah, figured definitely. it out after that. I was like, OK, I'm just going to kind of have my own little idea of what happens and say it's my opinion because that's what everybody should do. Yeah, totally. I do find that that could be difficult sometimes talking to people like interviewing people that don't use that kind of language, like in my opinion, or here's what from my experience that I always try to, to include that. Cause I think it's, I find it to be important in, in paranormal conversations. And that is something that I love. And I'm sure you found this too, is that I have on people with knowledge and experience that a lot, really resonates with a lot of people. And then they contact me and they go, that thing, you know, I tried that thing that that person said, or or I had a session with that psychic or that whoever, and it resonated with me. But then on the flip side, I hear, I did it and it didn't work for me. And it's like, okay, well, I uh, these are just, you know, keep your minds <laughs> open, you know, and these uh, we're having conversations about this stuff. It can be very nuanced and... I don't know. We're all arguing things we can't see and feel and touch. And so just take a breath. It's called the unknown. And that's the fun <laughs> part of it. You know, if these, if this was all concrete, it would just, it wouldn't be as fun. You know, I, I, why would I want to talk about something that we have all the answers to? That's not, that's not fun for me. Right. Exactly. Well, you do love your paranormal shows. And like you were talking about <laughs> celebrity ghost stories and you, learned really quickly that not every celebrity has a ghost story. And I am curious, what would your episode of celebrity ghost stories look like? You know, like how would it start? What would that be? Oh my God. Well, of course my favorite part of celebrity ghost stories, which to be clear, there's been a reboot of that show, which is great, but it's different. It's not, it's not the celebrity ghost stories that I love so much and uh -huh. that I've that has greatly inspired my podcast, which is a celebrity in a studio talking to camera very seriously as there's a reenactment, oftentimes with actors that uh, have on wigs and <laughs> uh, only vaguely look like the celebrity. Um, that's what I love. I would actually sign up to be a part of the reenactment. Like I would be like, can I tell this story and be in the reenactment too? Because I think that would be fun, but not play myself. I would want somebody to play me and then I'll play the demon or something. But are you asking me what story I would tell? Yeah, I do. Do you, have you ever imagined it or pictured how it would go if you were in the show? Oh my God. Well, that would be, I would be so excited. Um, what story would I tell? I would probably tell my classic, like buying a Ouija board from Goodwill story that I told in the first episode of my podcast. And I've since brought up at least 4,000 times on my podcast, where basically I bought a Ouija board from a Goodwill and didn't play it. And as soon as I had it, things started happening around my apartment at the time. And breathing and and the sound of somebody walking toward my bed and sitting on my bed and and then 
I moved and I brought it with me and then it started up at the next place. And then I ended up just living with it for a couple of years. And it was just like an interesting, normal thing that I had that I weirdly wasn't super scared about. And it was fun because I would have people over and people would be like, okay, this is so weird, but like your fan just turned off (laughs) or it just, you know, like your toilet just flushed or people would like say these things like, has anyone ever, you know, asked you if your place is haunted? I'd be like, yeah, that's like, that's my, that's my go. It's like, it's fun. I don't know. And then it would be just be like this weird, interesting experience that we would get to share with each other as friends. And I don't know. I just, I, I thought it was kind of cool. Actually, it didn't seem to be evil. It didn't seem I don't know. It didn't seem that scary considering how scared I am of ghosts because once I, once the scary part was over, I got to know the ghost a bit. And then it was just, um, it was just, Oh, there's my friend, the ghost this Thursday on CBS. I don't know when you <laughs> sit come <laughs> my roommate, the ghost. Uh, I, it makes me think of like, we have a, a classroom ghost in my classroom that I kind of, um, <clears throat> we have no ghost in my classroom, but I tell my kids we have a ghost. And through <laughs> that, I think we've really willed ourselves a ghost. Like we creepy things will sometimes happen. And even I and the kids freak out and I love it. And even I am like, uh, girl, something's weird going on here. <laughs> well, that is a thing. What's what do they call that? An aggregore? Is that what an aggregore is? Um, I think making? don't they call that a, tul- a tulpa? Or something when you kind of create your own ghost out of nowhere. Yeah, because I know there is that famous uh, parapsychology. There's a group uh, that created their own ghost, I think, that people cite a lot with that. And I forget the name of the group. Yes, I've read about that. Well, we may have had something like that in my classroom, but I love it. I love it. And I'm always... I myself am always reaching out and trying to find the haunted and find, you know, the ghost. And more times than not, it's really boring and nothing ever happens. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I've had all kinds of Ouija boards and everything and they never do much with me. And I always make the joke that they're, it's basically my Ouija board is a coaster here on my table, you know, and I even have like this trackpad at my computer is a you know, Ouija board and it's like, uh, what's going to happen? Cause I've tried it for years and nothing does, but I think they're cool. I love them. They're just mysterious and, and fascinating. Yeah. I mean, the one that I had, who knows, you know, who knows what it, it just seemed like maybe there was some kind of energy that was on it. I don't know. Of course, in the past I've been like, it's possessed. It's Annabelle. I don't know. Like, I don't know what I thought it was, but it's, it just seemed like there was some kind of something that I, you know, I'm almost tempted to say maybe it wasn't even attached to that. You know, it could have just been something, something else, but I do know it happened the night I bought it. Energy is a thing with objects. And so totally. Yeah. I mean, I do believe that if if you felt something going on with it, it was it might like you said, it might not necessarily have been something attached to it. But, you know, things contain energy, especially when we give things energy like the mystery of Ouija boards and things like that. Mm -hmm. Totally. The personality we know as Roz Dresvelez. When did Mm -hmm. she show up? in the world unleashed (laughs) well uh i started going by that name probably in 2014 i guess i don't know i'm very bad with years especially (laughs) after this pandemic i don't know what time is but yeah probably around then and it started and and you started out as an entertainer right and and doing the comedy clubs and things like that yeah it's been a long journey I've always kind of thought of my career as a drag queen starting in, um, gosh, probably like 2010. But the more that time has revealed itself to me and like just different things have come up in in my life, I've been like, I don't think that I like was doing drag back then. I think I was actually just more experimenting with gender and with 
wearing female clothes and, you know, having that exploration, which, you know, it's been more interesting as time has gone on. I'm like, oh, I don't think that I'm like a man that dresses like a woman and performs. I'm more on the transgender spectrum and drag is sort of a over the top campy expression of myself really. And so that's sort of how I felt most comfortable performing for a number of years, just because I wasn't very comfortable with the way that I looked uh, as a male presenting person. And now I'm sort of finding a, a happy medium, I guess. And so I will be going after the pandemic. I'll be almost starting anew in some ways and performing also uh, out of drag, which to me, drag, my own definition is sort of all the things you can take off, all the all of the things that at the end of the day you can take off. And, and I'm going to be performing and doing things more with the things already off. And this sounds like I'm talking about being naked, but no, I mean like not having a wig on, not having jumbo eyelashes, not having padding to make me look like I have a big juicy butt or whatever, like not having all of the the camp of it and just sort of being myself. And I'm really excited about that. I love it. I love hearing that you're growing and that this whole Roz Drez Fales experience has been, I don't know, maybe it's been kind of an education or like training for who you want to be. Yeah. And I also, I love to discuss those topics when they come up on my podcast, because I, you know, as an educator and as someone who, you know, I like to stand up for the kids that I know are LGBT and in, you know, I think it's good for them to hear these stories. And, you know, what advice do you have to a young person who also may have had similar experiences coming into your own and coming into to Roz? Well, I mean, it's always so weird because I'm like, I'm not that old, but I'm also really old when it comes to like kids these days, <laughs> because I like I didn't have uh, access to YouTube or podcasts or any of that stuff. So it's hard for me to relate to that experience of a child these days. But the great thing about the world that we live in these days is that there are places that even, you know, and I understand having to kind of uh, be in the closet, so to speak, or whatever, given the circumstances that you're in. Um, hopefully you'll, there is a chance for those people to be able to put the earbuds in and, and listen to a podcast or, or watch some videos or read or something, you know, there's, there is so much out there of just seeing people being their most authentic selves. And to me, that is what has gotten me to the place that I'm at now is even though I was living an out fun, you know, free life, just seeing people being absolutely themselves is what made me feel like, oh my God, like I have permission to do that. And I always have. And, and those people that, that do live freely and proudly as who they are, are so inspiring to me because, you know, especially the people that did it in a time when it's not as easily acceptable. And so for me, I just want to be as open and out as I can be and and show people how happy and fun it can be as well as the challenges that come with it. And hopefully people that are struggling or questioning those feelings can seek out people that are free, free and and proud. That's awesome. The I, I think one of the only other guests I've had that I've asked that similar question of is Michelle Belanger, who you also recently oh my had God, my on hero. your show, like a two part episode. And it was ma- amazing. But she I remember almost crying when she gave advice to my listeners about just being yourself and, you know, not 
caring at all about what the rest of the world thinks and just be letting your freak flag fly, you know? Yeah. I mean, I want to see more queer representation in the uh, paranormal world. I think that the thing that draws me so much to the paranormal world is it's something that can truly unite all kinds of people. Now, of course, there's also skeptics that are all kinds of people, but it is something that it doesn't matter any of the stuff, uh, skin tone, sexual orientation, whatever, all of it. There are people around the world that all believe in this stuff. And I think it is a way to unite people in some ways, to unite some people. I hope to see more acceptance in the paranormal world of uh, queer people and trans people and um, and people of color. And hopefully we'll see some of that on TV as well in these in these TV shows. And that's something that I, I, you know, I love Michelle and and how vocal and open she is. She's, She's amazing. Yeah. She is fabulous. I love her. And speaking of expert, like if there's someone who really knows a ton about stuff, she would be one of them. So some of your other guests on Ghosted by Roz Dresveles have included Coco Peru, which shut up. Coco Peru, like I was so jealous of you when I was listening to that one and I can't stop thinking about the movie trick every time I ah. hear Coco's, <laughs> but it burns. Oh um, my God. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> lucky to, like, I mean, to me, my drag heroes are the people that did it before it became a reality phenomenon on TV. And um, I'm so lucky. It's kind of insane how those people are like mentors to me. And so, yeah, Coco Peru, Jackie Beach, Jerry Vine, Peaches Christ, who I might see in a little bit today. Um, They're all good friends and just the greatest. That's amazing. You also have interviewed Deborah Wilson, which I think was your first guest. And you've had Katrina yeah. Weedman and Margaret freaking Cho. That is her middle name. Yeah, her middle name. Yes. And Jack Osborne and Richard Estep, who I actually suggested. You hooked me up you. with. Thank yes. you. I love me some Richard. His voice is delicious. And so great. Amy Bruni, who I've also interviewed. And most recently, at least as the time of this recording, you had Butch Patrick, who played Eddie Munster. <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on. I'm getting so excited when you list all these names. And I sometimes check in with myself as I record because I'm like, okay, I don't want to be one of these people that's just like kissing everyone's ass every time they're on my show. And it's like, come on, like whatever. But I truly don't have people on my show unless I think that they're amazing. And all the people that you just named, I'm like, oh, I love all of those people. I'm so lucky that I got to talk to them. Yeah, well, and that's funny because you had connections with a lot of these people already. It sounds like, and for me, like I have gotten a lot of my connections from the podcast. Like I have a lot of good friends who, you know, I met through interviewing them on the podcast. And so it's cool to have those connections. And the last guest I wanted to talk about, because I just love hearing you two together is Sam Pancake. You two are like so cute on the episodes together. You could just tell you're such buds. Well, the two of us, we had a podcast for probably two or three years. And that was like a celebrity interview podcast. And we had a ton of celebrities on that one. And we did it every single week from Sam's Kitchen. And yeah, the two of us, I mean, we're best friends. And so we're we're constantly together. And we had a rapport. Do you have some favorite moments with guests that stand out? Oh my God. So many. Well, of course, having Cassandra Peterson, aka Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, that uh, she's my number one idol if ever I had one. So having her on was just insane. I couldn't even believe it. It was just like the most perfect thing ever, especially because she has an amazing celebrity ghost story. And so she was just, it was just so cool. So having her on, I mean, I've, There's so many stories that I've heard that are just, okay, to me, the perfect guest, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of perfect guests and I could never choose like a favorite, but 
my favorite type of thing that can happen is when I ask somebody that I don't know if they have a story and it turns out they actually do have an amazing story and they've never told anyone the story. And that's really like my, like what I, what I strive for. And so I get, I get so excited when I'm like, Oh, you are hiding this from me the whole time. (laughs) So yeah, that that's pretty fun. I mean, I did have like, that moment where I had Billy Lee from the TV show Vanderpump Rules talk about having sex with a ghost. That was pretty, um, a pretty iconic moment in ghosted history because that, that's the first time we got into like People Magazine and Entertainment Tonight and like all these publications and stuff. You know, no big deal. <laughs> Just a little bit of publicity. <laughs> and um, yeah, God, so many. And it's also, it's so unfortunate because the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of like really busy people that I can't always nail down to get on the show. I started to get, but I also at the same time couldn't figure out how to record a podcast from home because I'm lucky to have a studio that we would record at here in LA. And now we couldn't go to the studio. So it was like trying to figure it out. So unfortunately I do have a few that have not great uh, sound from that time. But that was a fun time to have on some friends of mine that are that are busy, like um, Busy Phillips, just being a busy um, Wendy McClendon Covey from the Goldbergs. Um, who did I have? Karen Kilgariff. I don't know. It was it was a fun time, though. I, well, it was a scary time at the beginning of the pandemic, but it it did kind of have a slumber party kind of uh-huh. cozied up inside vibe. Yeah. I think I recorded those on my phone. Like, I think I was literally just like sitting on my phone talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a part of that that makes it cooler too. Like someone's going to talk, speak differently to you when you're just chilling on the phone than if they're in some big official studio, you know, maybe. Yeah. Well, and plus it's always fun to have on friends. You yeah. know, it's, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even like, I, I didn't want to hide it. The truth is like, I've had, I've done this every single week. And so almost all of my friends with ghost stories have been on. So I have to like go find new friends. <laughs> I have to like go out and be in the world and talk to people. And I am not afraid to go up to people and be like, do you have a ghost story? <laughs> and just ask them if they want to come on my podcast, which I love doing. And and I forget sometimes who I know and who I, I used to just hang out in comedy clubs where it's just like, celebrities everywhere or just like interesting people everywhere. And, and one thing comes to another and I'll be like, do you have a ghost story? And then they do. And then I'm like, Oh yeah. And I know you like we're friends and like, just come on. And so I don't know. It's just, it's kind of that part of the pandemic has been kind of like, okay, I need to just be out and about and get inspired by just the world and, and be around people. Well, that time is coming. Yeah. That time is coming. It's about here. I think. You have expressed interest in trying to interview Tyler Henry. And let me just tell you, if you get Tyler Henry, I will be so jealous. I've been trying forever. I have always wanted to interview Tyler Henry. That would be, but at the same time, it would be awesome to hear Tyler Henry on your show. Well, I've been trying forever too. I haven't heard anything. So I'll keep trying. It's like, come on, man. It's like, I know you're bored in this pandemic. Come on. (laughs) I know. I know. Well, especially like big celebrity psychics like that. I mean, it's like, I don't even need you to read me. I just want to talk to you. Right. And I think that they're, they get so, they're so in demand, especially if they do readings for like clients and stuff. Like it's probably pretty hard to, to get them to do to talk to people, I feel um, it's unfortunate, but I'll keep trying because I also love the Long Island medium. I yeah. really want her. On. <laughs> Have you had readings by celebrities, psychic mediums? Um, no, I don't think I have. I've talked to many people that have been read by both of those psychics and yeah. they both tell me that they are very accurate. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny is I get a lot of people that email me and say, hey, I need a good recommendation for a medium. And I think a lot of people assume that since I've had a lot of psychic mediums on my show that I've been read by a lot of psychic mediums and I Mm -hmm. haven't really. So I, you know, I just kind of use my best judgment of like how much they impress me or their character, 
you know, because I also don't want to say, oh, yeah, go to that person. And then it's like a, wah, 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 you know, like it's a giant bomb, you know. I But I also think that there's some people that the psychic gets a good reading on and some that they don't. Like, I do think that a psychic can be amazing and not great for per person. Yeah. It's just sort of what you're paying for. Yeah. I truly, in my opinion... I believe that if a psychic, if there is a psychic that is a thousand percent accurate every single time for every single person, that would be our God. We would (laughs) all just worship that person. There's a reason that that doesn't exist. True. Like, you know, we we would all be like, okay, this is the second coming or whatever. And we'd be like, this person knows everything. They're right about it. And it's just, I just don't. And of course, there would still be people who'd be like, no, I don't think it's real or whatever. So I really don't think that that exists. As much as I believe in psychics, I do think that they aren't all 100%. I have a hard time believing that any single psychic is 100% accurate for everybody. Yeah, I just don't think. But, but a lot of them, I'm like, hey, I think the amount of skill you do have is pretty impressive. So that's enough for me. Yeah. And I also like hearing when psychics and mediums will not be afraid to say, you know what? This one's not happening. Like I'm not getting anything or I'm not feeling this. That almost impresses me more. You know, when you get a really good, honest medium, that's like, I am not feeling this. Right. As opposed to just like, oh, but I need to make something up. Like, yeah, you don't want that. Right. Right. So you were talking about how you're starting to get out there and having some paranormal investigation experiences. I'm curious, like, what are your favorite tools and techniques you've been experimenting with? I know you've talked about the spirit box, right? I also love the spirit box. Yeah, I have a spirit box. I really want to do the Estes method. That's fun. Especially, I mean, I'd seen it done a number of times, but I especially after reading Amy Bruni's book, which came out in the pandemic, I was like, God, I really do want to do it. I love watching them do it on TV. And I find that so interesting, which if anybody listening doesn't know what that is, it's basically when you use a spirit box and it scans for what is believed to be spirit voices. And one person wears headphones and the other person can't hear what's on the spirit. The headphones are attached to the spirit box. One person can hear what's going on with the spirit box. Another person is asking questions and they can't hear um, you know, noise canceling headphones. And so it's like a person's asking a ghost questions. And then the other person is just getting these random uh, answers. I don't know. To me, that feels accurate. That, that one feels like, okay, I get that one. That one seems legit. And and when you experiment, I can't wait until you try that. When uh, the my first couple of experiments that we did, uh, Karen A. Dahlman and I at uh, the Haunted Castle House, we tried several Estes Method sessions, and it does feel like that. You're like, wow, this is a little more real than just sitting here, us all listening to the spirit box together. But in an Estes method, I was called a fat cookie in an Estes method. So my listeners know <laughs> that famous moment where I was called a fat cookie. I will never forget that. And we laughed. Wait, they called so you a much. fat cookie? They called me a fat cookie. And I was like, what'd you call me? <laughs> oh my, who was the ghost? Do you know who the ghost I don't was? know. The, the Haunted Castle House, it's here in Missouri, and it has connections to being a medical, like a doctor's office. And there's a large, like pauper's grave in the back when people died of like, whatever it was, uh, one of the pandemics that went through. And so there's lots of people buried in the back and it also has some civil war connections. And so a lot of the things that we were picking up in our Estes method had to do with medical things, battle things, bodies in the backyard like those things were coming out and we were in here in this castle house so it could be anyone yeah so but it is it is kind of validating when you can't hear it but someone else says it and they can't hear you it's very (laughs) cool it's one of the coolest things i think that has come out of paranormal and even though you know when they came up with that at the stanley it wasn't necessarily on tv or anything but it did kind of refresh paranormal investigation a little bit. A lot of shows are starting to use it. It's kind of cool. 
Yeah, it just, I think that so often it's like you hear things in a spirit box and it's like, it can, especially when you have like a lot of people listening to it, I think you you can be like, it said cookie. No, it said cookie. No, it said looky, uh, whatever. And then it's like, well, which one is it? So we can know what direction to go in. You know, it's just, it's sometimes there's too many cooks in the kitchen. Right. Exactly. Is there anything you won't try in the paranormal? Is there anything you would stay away from out of fear or not understanding it? Um, I love to be not an expert and not in charge <laughs> with, yeah. with any of this stuff, even in conversation. Like, I like to just be like, I'm not going to tell anyone what to do. I'm not going to tell whatever. And so I would prefer to investigate with people that know what they're doing more and that I feel that I can trust. I don't want to be with people that are like screaming and cussing at ghosts and whatever. Like I just, I, I want to feel like I'm in good hands. And so if I'm, if I am out with people that are like just looking for trouble, I think I would have to remove myself. I I don't like that. Yeah. Peace out on that. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever and also whatever I could do to not have a ghost follow me home. Like oh. I don't want to be involved in any like not closing the door in my own way or whatever. I just don't I don't want to end up with like, come visit me. Oh, they're not here. And then they <laughs> visit me later that night. Like I just don't want that. Yeah, well, I've only had that to my knowledge, I've only had that once. I've, you know, people always freak out about it. And it was actually a story that I called and told you on your one of your listener extravaganza episodes where yes. I'm pretty sure something was with me for a brief time. And if nothing else, it gave me a good story to tell. But Ooh. Oh, it was oh it was cool. It was scary, but also like kind of I don't know, kind of gives you street cred, I guess. Totally. I don't know. Maybe that's dorky. That's so dorky. So one more question, and then we are totally going to play EVP or EV police. And if you don't know what that is, you need to listen to Ghosted by Roz Dresfeles because (laughs) Roz is super obsessed with EVP, as am I. I used to do a lot of research in EVP and used to listen to them for hours and hours and hours and record for hours. And so I busted out some old EVP that most of my listeners have heard and I can't wait to play this with Roz. But last question before we do that, and that is what is your most treasured possession? Just in the world? Just yeah, anything. Like the thing that I would haunt? Oh, anything. It could be emotional possession. It could be a wig. It could be <laughs> it could be anything. Um yeah. So basically like when I have the estate sale and I'm dead if somebody buys this, it will be coming with a ghost. Oh, I like this take on it. Yes. Uh, God, that's hard because I am like a stuff person. Like I'm not, I don't think I'm a hoarder, but I'm very into like things. I love tchotchkes and God, I don't know. What oh, I could be, I would be a very good hoarder. I don't think I am a hoarder, but I do like things. I just, I am so sentimental about things. So that's why it's tough because I'm not so sentimental to the point where it's like, no, that bag of Cheetos, I need it. And then like, I just keep it. And then there's like, you know, dead cats underneath. The I was just going to say that. That's yeah, funny. no, it's not that. But I have a couple of like dresses, I think that have done very well for me and have had really great memories in and um, especially cause you know, I am at the end of the day, the bargain bin beauty, the thrifty queen, Roz Dresfeles. And so I have a couple of items of clothing that it's like, I spent $3 on and have made dozens of dollars. <laughs> 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 um, so they're kind of like my proud treasures. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't have like one, like. Well, we'll go with dresses unless you want to be more specific. I have one dress that I feel is very special to me. 
just because it was so cheap and I have worn it so much. And it's just, I don't know. I just, it's just, I, I love the way I feel when I wear it. And I just think it's amazing. The lucky dress. The lucky dress. Are you ready for some EVP or EV police? Yes. Okay. I wish I would have been prepared with your little um, intro to this game because I didn't it's even think about that. It's time for EVPs or EV police. Yes. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Here we go. So this one here is probably my favorite EVP from when I was out in the world of investigation. And I'm one who I like to play a little bit before the EVP and a little bit after the EVP to help with context. So I'll kind of help you know when the EVP is happening. And then, of course, I have some four options for you. Okay. Okay. Wow. This is cool. In the tradition of Roz Dresvelez. So this is me. You hear me talking first because I'm investigating in a fellowship hall inside a church. Can you believe a church was open to us investigating in it? That's cool. That doesn't happen very often. It was known for being haunted? Well, not very known publicly at the time. And they were, they were cool with us sharing and promoting it too, which is kind of cool. But so I'm, I'm checking for EMF and there is a recorder sitting in the floor in the middle of this big hall. And I'm talking to my dad, who's also there investigating. And then I'll kind of point to you when the EVP comes. Here we go. Okay. Side of the fellowship hall, opposite of the kitchen, it's higher numbers. And then you go to the center, it's like... Now that's the enhanced file. I didn't tell you that. So that's like the EVP part is enhanced. It's um, slowed down a tad. It is, you know, amplified a little bit, some noise removal, things like that. Do you okay. have any instincts right off the bat? Can you play just the EVP again? Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be cool enough to just do that, but I'll try to fast forward. Let's see. Oh, okay. Wow, this is hard. <laughs> well, do you want your options? I I thought it sounded like mothballs or something. Mothballs, like I love it. That's the first time I've heard that. Okay. So some of these options are really things that I have heard people say they hear. Okay. And then one of them is for real made up. A couple of them are made up. And then one of them is what I think it is. So A is this is Paul. B is it's all over me. C is wear a shawl. And D is girl, you're tall. Okay. So do you want to hear it again? Yeah. Okay. I know you're excited. This is just riveting. I'm so pumped to be playing this with you. Oh, okay. Now I hear. So now what do you hear? It's all over me. Yes. I'm so excited. That's what I have always heard. (laughs) Okay. Here's another one. This was on a different investigation. Okay. And so here. We go. There's probably plenty of outlets downstairs. So after the little, I I bleeped out something that the uh, a family member. It was this was me helping a family out, and I bleeped out their voice just for their privacy. So it's kind of after that boop when you hear okay. the voice. So oh, okay. I will I will back it up. There's probably plenty of outlets downstairs. <laughs> What's he doing? What's he doing? Okay, I'm going to play it one more time and then we'll give you your options. There's probably plenty of outlets downstairs. What are the options? Okay, your options are A, see Dorothy. B, you're dorky. C, close the door, please. And D, that's filthy. Are you ready? Yeah. There's probably plenty of outlets downstairs. I mean, I guess C. Dorothy. I do hear door. Yeah. I hear C. Dorothy. That's what we had written down for that one. Is there a Dorothy or is it like a Golden Girls fan? Or? We never found a connection with a Dorothy. This was a home and it was, I was in the dining room. This was actually before the investigation. I've always recorded 
when I arrive and set up, I always record through this setup and everything too. So this was actually while we were setting up and I was with the family. We were in the dining room and I was talking about going down to the basement to set some things up in the basement. And that's when we heard what we assume is C. Dorothy. So we're like, is there a Dorothy in the basement or what's up with that? Uh. Yeah. All right, here's one with the spirit box, and I think it's probably going to be obvious, or at least I would hope it's kind of obvious. Okay. This is just me investigating in my last home. I I used to do a lot of EVP research just in my house, so not necessarily in a haunted location, just in my house. And um, this is me at the with the spirit box. What am I touching? I was sitting, I was at a Ouija board, and I said, what am I touching? Okay. I'll play it again. Here we go. What am I touching? Ouija board. Yes. Is that not crazy? I think that is one of the creepiest EVPs that I have. Well, it is. I never claim anything is an EVP. I always say it's an EVP like sample. But people also say that they hear my name at the beginning. And I've never been super confident that that was my name at the beginning, but they hear Patrick before that. I'll play it one more time. What am I touching? Oh, yeah. That's Patrick. So you would agree that that would be Patrick at the beginning? Yes. Yeah, and it's funny that it didn't jump out at me at the time. Like, I should have got all the feels when that happened, but I totally didn't. Ugh. Weird. Okay, I have one more for you, and this one's going out to just the Patreon members because I would never in a million years put this out in the regular feed. So you will have to be a Patreon member to listen to this one. And so uh, here we go. Cut to the Patreon peeps. Anyway, so now we'll jump back to the regular episode and I just want to give you the chance to you know give us any final thoughts if there's anything coming up for you or if you already know what you know the next couple episodes are going to be and where people can find you and some shameless promo right here well every Thursday my podcast ghosted by Ross Dress Velez Everywhere you get podcasts, I guess. And gosh, what else do I have going on? I mean, I don't have a ton of stuff right now that I can like promote necessarily. I mean, you could follow me on Instagram at Roz Hernandez. And if anything happens, I'll put it up on there. People can follow you and figure out what's coming down the line. Yeah, I mean, I have like stuff locally in LA that I'll probably that I'll be doing like in the coming months. But in terms of like people everywhere in podcast land, I would say just uh, if you could go check out my podcast. Yay, you rock! <laughs> Thank you. I'm jumping in here to let you know about two big episodes coming up for Roz on Ghosted. You know, being the host of this podcast is cool because sometimes you just get random texts from people like Andrea Perrin or Chip Coffee. And after my interview with Roz, I was able to connect her with our friend Andrea Perrin, who you'll remember is the eldest daughter from the Perrin family from The Conjuring Story. Anyway, Roz is super excited about it, and it's a two-parter. Part one with Andrea is coming out later this week and part two the week after that. So go check it out. And if you want to hear Andrea's interview here on The Big Seance, check out episode 98 or just visit bigseance.com slash 98. Thank you to the following super para nerds who support the show at patreon.com slash big seance. Daryl, James Deacon, Melissa Armour, Anne Marie Sullivan, Justin J. Justin, Genesis, Natalie, Kim Robb, Jim Bud, Josiah Lorenzo, 
Susan Davey, Paula Mitchell, and Amy Park Gedicke. My supporters at the parlor guest level, who can be found at bigseance.com slash parlor guests are Linda of shimmeringmoons.com, Anne Rekovich of ozparatech.com, Rochelle Fops, Christine Ferens, Mindy Kentop, Hope Battaglia, Cassie Keller, Diane Rax, Nettie, Dina DeCastro of Dina DeCastro Astrology, Peggy Hagen, Bruce Williams, Lena and John of Carbon Lilies, David Rubenstein, and Norman and Linda Keller. That sound you just heard was the above and beyond. There's not even a category for your level of support fireworks display because I have five awesome listeners who continue to support the show at the $10 level. Glenna Becker, Steve Skinner, Kevin Gilbert, AJ Meredith, and James Wilfong. So thank you, Glenna, Steve, Kevin, AJ, and James. And thank you, Paranerds. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit bigseance.com. And you can continue the discussion and hang out with a great community of Paranerds by joining us in the Big Seance Parlor on Facebook. Want to hear your voice in a future episode? Go to bigseance.com slash feedback to learn how. Thank you so much for listening. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out, but we'll see you and light them again next time. 